Okay, I'm here at Sweetwater. Finally, I'm with Tamara. Spell like a camera? Spe a camera with a T. God bless you, thank you. So what is your position here? I am a sales engineer, uh, a music store sales engineer lead. Um, I help interactions with customers, whether it's on the main floor, band and orchestra, gears and trades. You do the B&O too? Mm-hmm. Oh Lord, you're busy. Oh yeah, we just uh, celebrate, well not celebrated, we just enacted our second year of rentals. Um, we just opened up to all 50 states. What? Yes. You're taking that too? Yes, uh, on top of local rentals. So we we are the gateway drug for a lot of kids like musical journeys. That, I like the gateway drug reference. We appreciate that. <laughs> so you're going to take us on this journey of what looks like a pretty epic showroom. Yes. Prepare it is yourself. Massive. Yes. We're going in. Follow us this way. Yeah. Okay. So break it down for me. We are in the acoustic room. Yes. We are showroom. So what we have in store, we have over 10,000 items physically here in the store. Uh, maybe quadruple that here in our warehouse. Um, we try to keep as up to date with- Wait, wait, wait pause for a minute. You said 10,000 items in the show. In the physical store. That you could sell. Mm-hmm. Mm. And uh, we have a digital uh, warehouse where we can go onto our kiosks, our iPads, even these screens here in every single room. So that way we can take something that a customer has seen <laughs> via the internet and put it directly in their hands. Okay, perfect. And what guitar brands do you carry? We, just take There's a look around everything. you. We have Gibson, we have Taylor, we have Fender, Martins, pretty much everything across the line. My current favorite is the uh, Alhambra uh, uh, classical guitars. Okay. Made directly out of Spain. They sound like so beautiful. I'm like, why is that your favorite? You have so many cool guitars here already. Well, uh, naturally I'm a classical guitar player. Are you? Yeah. Okay. It's uh, yeah. one of the things that I, I enjoy and I grew up with. So anytime I see something like thin line or parlor style that fits to me as a smaller person, I'm always, I'm I always here petite. for it. Petite. So petite. over here, let's say I see this Gibson, like I see like a J45 or a Southern Jumbo. I want this guitar, but I don't want that guitar. Mm -hmm. can, you, can I pull another one? Of course. So that's the J45. Kind of like a walkthrough scenario of what we there. show. So you can uh, customize it or you can just do blind searches like this where it shows you our full inventory of what could be in stock, what it could be in our uh, distribution center in Phoenix, Arizona as well. Or you can be a little bit more specific, go into the search guitars and we're looking at the J45. Gibson. If I learned how to spell that would make this great, this job so much easier. All right, so this gives us a full selection of what we currently have in stock. We can choose what's up for- My mouth has just been open the whole time. Like I'm <laughs> frustrated at how efficient it is. It's, if there's a lot of like little moving parts that we try to keep up with, with constant communication, just making sure we know what the customer is looking for and what they want. We can bring down like several guitars at a time. We even have instances where customers want like 10 of the same guitar to play against. To like see in which store, mm -hmm. you guys will do it? Yes. And then that's between music store in the local area or upstairs sales engineers where they are uh, providing resources for their customers. They come travel all over the country, all over the world to come in here and test our gear. Okay, that makes sense. I appreciate that quick view. Casino Guitars does not quite have this technology yet. We're working on it, okay? <laughs> Just need a bigger space. Oh yes, I think in uh, the Guinness Book of World Records, uh, Sweetwater is known for its largest pedal board, and that's due to us just being able to cater to a lot of setups. Um, we have a lot of different varieties ranging from different price points. It's really amazing that somebody might come in for just like a standard overdrive and not realize that the sound that they were looking for was like a tube screamer by Ivan. It's always a tube screamer yeah. at the end of the day. Usually. You think you want to climb, you end up with a tube screamer and you yeah. save yourself about $5,000. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, uh, grunge musicians <laughs> coming through. So that's kind of their bread and butter here. So we're just listening to Neil Young on the Howard Stern Show talk about it. he's the godfather of grunge apparently. Mm -hmm. Amongst other things, Derek, thanks for that. So if I want to play any of these pedals, we can just take it and go in the of demo course, you, you yeah. took it up? So if you want to follow me around here, I can show you where our pedal stations are. So you can oh, grab a pedal, hook yeah. it up on our station here. Right. 
and sometimes you can swap out this the guitar cool. if you want to hear it against uh, specific pickups but we have our power supply if you want to look in the i was seeing how you did it i was like see the, the tricks of this so we have everything set up down here so that way proprietary stuff you can't possible. see it secret that is power supplies in there it's too a secret so any pedal you want to play on any of this we can just go bam bam yes. and go into it mm -hmm. that's pretty cool that makes life simple too there's a lot more pedals i just realized i thought that was it oh no it wraps all around oh there's more sides. back there too i don't like this anymore <laughs> it's too much for me i don't use pedals they scare me but all the guys at the shop love pedals they love those I'm still dipping my toe into it. That's why I love my Boss Katana so much. It's, it's pretty much like the Swiss Army Man of, of It is bags. cool. I like overpriced, expensive tube amps. Mm -hmm. And so um, that don't, then I'm just scared of this though for some reason. But I do love this pedal. Everyone in the shop has one of these. Oh yeah. And that's really cool looking. Okay, awesome. I'm obsessed. Maybe I'll get into pedals. So Dave was just telling me that, I was, I was asking him, why is everything so quiet? from room to room and he's like everything was designed by an acoustician yes so we make sure that the walls can kind of handle and tolerate the sound that comes out of a lot of these rooms um especially in our demo room so that way you can have more of that clarity of sound on a saturday all day this room is hopping it is literally screaming as soon as you open a door it just floods right out because it's, it, it's, you couldn't hear any of this when we were out there. Mm -hmm. And then you come here, it sounds like a guitar shop now. Mm -hmm. now so like, we do a really good job as far as sound control, trying to make sure that other customers can enjoy the, the instruments that they're playing outside, as well as in here. Okay. And this has all the, pretty much a smattering of everything you guys carry is in here. Uh, the idea. Yes, plus more in our warehouse. Of course. So well, there's a lot of uh, vendors who are coming in and kind of just starting out as well. Okay. So oftentimes you'll find their, their gear in our walls, but same as the acoustic room, we cater a lot to Gibson, Ibanez, Schechter, Fender, um, Fender PRS, like the whole nine. You have the, are the Fender custom shops in here at all? Um, we have a lot of the Americans up on the top shelf. Uh, a few of the customs should be up here as well. Sorry, yep, like, like the Tele Custom. I'm like, thank you, Tele. It's kind of structured from kind of like beginner, intermediate to professional. Yep. French world. Sorry, so this is like, I'm still a kid in a candy store. Yeah. I, I know. I work at a guitar shop. I live in one. But I still love going to guitar shops every yes. day. Like we, we've literally traveled across the country to come to a guitar store. <laughs> It's it's one of those things that you kind of hear the hype and a lot of people assume that Sweetwater is mostly just online, that there's no brick and mortar that you can come Well, that's what I would assume too. Like I, I knew there was a retail because I'm not completely uneducated, mm -hmm. but I would think that too, just yeah. it's the idea. And that's the primary bulk of your business is obviously online. Yes, that is pretty much like 75% of a lot of the revenue is Sorry. upstairs uh, SCs calling out to different states to different customers. Okay. It's impressive. Well, we're going to thank you. Yeah, of course. Keep going. Rock and roll. Yeah. So this is our base room. It's a little bit more intimate, but you will hear schism at least three times a day but throughout. you actually have a base room. Yes. Most guitar shops don't have bases <laughs> anymore. Yeah. yeah. Like we went to some of the big ones down in our region as well. Like there's maybe like five to 10 decent bases. Or yeah. The bass player has been left to die and that shouldn't be the case. You have lefty bases behind this we guy. Do, we have acoustic bases. That was something that tripped me up whenever I first came here was the acoustic bases because I didn't even know those existed. The Epiphone acoustic bases is awesome. Mm -hmm. So um, do you like hang out here just to relax yourself a bit with the soothing um, pillows? Sometimes, it, like I said, in here you're kind of hearing the repeat of a lot of favorites. Okay. Uh, Tool is one of them. Definitely, like anything by Ozzy Osbourne with a decent bass line. Okay, now that you started that, what's the most played? Because we have it in ours. So, what is the most played guitar song in Sweetwater? Probably in the piano room, a river flows through you. Okay, in the um, piano room. <laughs> in the piano room, that is a uh, favorite. In the acoustic room, you're hearing a lot of uh, Blackbird by the Beatles. Okay. 
Um, the deals are still holding the number base one. Base room is Schism and a lot of Metallicas you're going to hear out of the electric. See, I would vote Seven Nation Army is what we hear the most. Really? Still, which is White crazy. White Stripes. I know. Okay. Like 2001, baby. Going hard. I like that. Um, it was a popular song. It was popular. Well, it's easy. And it's, yeah. And it, sound, and it sounds cool. And, you know, so it's like I've caught so that our generations, well, my generations, you're young. Um, <laughs> Smoke on the Water. Oh, yeah. She had a senior moment there. I was like, I can't remember that old person's song. My first song that I played over and over again was uh, Friday I'm in Love by The Cure. I love him. Yeah, Robert Smith. Oh, my gosh. He was like my musical awakening. He was like the thing that was like brought me from pop music to actual music. And I'm not saying that pop is bad or anything, no, but it's something that resonates. I'm a Bieber like, fan still to this day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like Bieber, ride or die, all the way. But I do love, like, I love like, the Smiths. I love Robert, mm -hmm. you know, Robert Smith, obviously, too. Them's were my, my awakening bands. I can tell you got a little hidden goth in you, a little, a little sad bit, child. A little bit, yeah, it was a sad was a British boy too. vibe. I get it. Oh, I man. get it a lot. <laughs> it's an orange bass, too. Okay, we, Derek, you'll get all the cool footage of this later, but gosh. It's awesome. There's a lot of oh, great bass. stuff. And the bass guy's long hair like you're supposed to. It's oh, awesome. Oh, no. That's Patrick. He is like the lord of basses yeah, in I here. can tell. You can tell he's a bass guy, right? Just yeah, he's got it. the power stance down and everything. Yeah, and it's like the whole thing, the look. Mm -hmm. It's like attractive Getty Lee. A lot of the uh, basses in this room is actually under sort of his knowledge. He replaces everything that people are expecting to see on the walls, that people are asking for to have more of. And we take a lot of the customer's feedback to make sure that they're seeing their most wanted items out here on the floor. So we take it upon ourselves to sense. pretty much co communicate with the customer and make sure that they're seeing everything that they would want to see in a high-end music store like this. Yeah, I guess you're a high-end music store. Fine. <laughs> Continue. Let's go, Derek. Let's go somewhere else. We are souped out with digital drum kits. Is, is that like a huge seller now? For those who are beginning and wanting to have like more areas in recording, a lot of the times, yes, they like the digital sound, but you get the purists of percussions who want the full shell set up. So this is a self-serving thing right now because I have three young children. Mm -hmm. I, I do want to get a nice digital drum set. Mm -hmm. Not like crazy nice. Okay. Like sort of like, you know, not Sweetwater nice. Casino guitar is nice. Mm -hmm. Why are you saying mm hmm so easily? Oh, it's, it's just so that you understand yeah. how low we are. Oh, no, I, get it. I understand the poverty mentality. I get it. No, show me, like, can you show me a cool, like, electric set? Is there one so in here? As far as those who are beginning, if you want that peace of mind of being able to put on some headphones and plug it in, yes. Um, normally, for parents who want to get their kids into it, but don't want Better. the, yes. You have the Surge, you have the Nitro, Elisis is great. My personal favorite is Roland simply because the brains in those things are Better. infinite. Yes, like they're amazing. You can change it up so much. This is really cool, the cage setup, how you guys did this. Mm -hmm. Man, this is, so this is this whole setup's only $315? Mm -hmm. What's wrong with you? You, you charge twice that. Just, well, just raise it, raise it up. No sometimes these are trade-ins from our used gear exchange. So we just make sure everything's in working amazing, condition yeah. and we resell it. And folks are able to get quality instruments for at a lower price. It's, it's amazing. This is probably one of my favorites because people will lose hours in this room. Wait, it's, it's in like, you can actually go in there and play? It's like a hot box for drums. Um, this is awesome. Yeah, oh, and you, have to, you got a fan. Mm -hmm. and you have a beer cooler back here, too. This is amazing. There's a lot of uh, perspiration that happens in there. That, that is really cool. So which drum set do you say I should get for my kids? Um, like either the, the it's Nitro not out, or the Surge by the Elises. These okay. are probably two of the most common beginner setups. Um, I believe in uh, a couple of instances, it might be on a promo where the drum amplifier comes with it. So that way, if uh, they want to perform it from their friends or family, you have that option to just get them plugged in and ready to go. We're gonna be doing some hard haggling later, so don't oh, worry. Let's do this. Everybody thinks I'm gonna be buying a guitar while I'm up here. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> I come here for electric drums and I'm not taking this on the airplane. Oh yeah, we would, well, we would be able to ship it to you. I know, that's the best part. Mm -hmm. I don't wanna carry anything on yeah, ever yeah. again. That's my life. Thank you, Derek. <laughs> Service so this there. is our service area. This is where we have our customers come in and check in their instruments to make sure that they are taken care of by our Sweetwater techs. Are your Sweetwater techs nice people? Case by case basis. Okay. They're amazing. Most they techs are, are a little bit di different. Yeah. Well, we are a store of introverts and as introverts. That's me. <laughs> 
as introverts uh, combining with other introverts, you get like that little clash of introverted hierarchy. Well, and that's sort of what the luthiers in the text sort of are the oh, kings yeah. of the introverts. Mm -hmm. And their, their fiefdom is very serious. But this guy has to be the nice one, right? Oh, yeah. that uh, Ryan and Kyle, they are both here today. They are both phenomenal. They are definitely masters of their craft. And a lot of the times, uh, whenever there is an issue that we can't handle here in the store, we send it out to the techs in our warehouse. Um, there's a guitar gallery where they do a 40-point uh, inspection on all of the instruments to make sure everything's set up and ready to go. Well, quick question on that. Let's say somebody buys a sweet or instrument not from here, but from your online mm -hmm. service. And they get it, there's a technical issue with it. It's, it's a dead pot. They don't know how to repair the pot themselves. Mm -hmm. Can they send it back and you guys fix it? Or? Of course, yeah. Um, so we have this, if, if they are purchasing here, we have the Sweetwater warranty where it allows uh, kind of like that ease of exchange. There's something like manufacturally wrong with the instrument. Um, we can either exchange it out with a better quality one or exchange it out with a different one entirely or bring it in for service so that way they can just have that work. Yeah, so they love that guitar. Like, I want this Strat. Yes. But like the pot's broken and I don't know how to fix a pot on my own. Mm -hmm. You guys can handle that? Of course. That's part of, okay. Fine, whatever, it's good. <laughs> this is that? probably <laughs> my all-time favorite part of the store, the gear exchange. Oh yeah, we're gonna meet with that guy. I just met him, he had the Hawaiian shirt on earlier. Yep. Um, so this is where we take in used items from customers all over the country. Um, we evaluate them, we give them an in-house credit or a check that they are able to use almost instantaneously. So in-house credit, if they do that, do they get a little bit more um, versus like a payout? Case by case uh, standard. So depending on if they're wanting to use that as an in-house credit to purchase from the rest of the store. Right. Normally, we can uh, meet them in the middle between either bringing the margin down on the new item that they're trying to get, okay, or um, give them a little bit more in the. That's trade. what I sort of figured. Yeah. Okay. Well, can I, can we go in here? Of course. Quick? Yes, please. Oh, Sean, look at all the recording gear. There's preamps and everything. This is where you'll probably find the most niche gear because this is from folks who are no longer using their starter guitars to folks who have been collecting for years and are trying to make some space. You no, know, I buy. I, I'll go to Guitar Center still and go to the use section. Mm -hmm. It's like I had an, an orange rocker verb there. I had mm -hmm. a friend of mine who, I'm not going to say his name, he owns a guitar shop now, but he used to work for FMIC. And he went to Guitar Center once, bought a 1969, I think, Marshall Plexi head for $850. They mislabeled it. It was supposed to be $8,500. That's lucky, though. He went in the parking lot and sold it for $8,500. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so hopefully you guys do that every once in a while. Um, every, no, I hope, maybe not, but uh, sure. Oh, that's cool. But we get a, like a lot of boutique amps. We get a lot of kind of like off the wall, even sometimes homemade pedals. You, it's amazing. You, you, you what take people... in the homemade pedals, like you'll buy them. I think I've only seen us take in one, but we'll take in homemade straps because it's awesome. <laughs> like these crazy things, like you know, it's got a fork sewn on it, and it's a long story. Have you seen that? Before? Yeah, we've had it. We sold them. It's great. So we ah. do. We we'll take in anything. Bring in your your underwear, your laundry. <laughs> Um, these are our gear folks. This is Bobby. He's pretty much like hey, the main dude. And Ryan. Oh, I'm sorry. There's Ryan. I was about to say, I was like, I was, like, was going to call you. I was like, Bobby, your hair looks great. <laughs> but you're Ryan. I want to see your videos. Thank you. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Man. Good to see you. We're, we're here at a real guitar store today, though. It's really frustrating. I'm not really happy about this experience. Let me tell you something. This has been the most depressing experience of my life but let's continue <laughs> i need to stay out here because i feel my wallet shrinking Hang on. that's the idea of a guitar shop but it's I fun know. though you feel good about it i know that it's easier to sneak guitars in than amplifiers and bring we have a whole video on how you sneak guitars in your house I too I just watch that one seriously there's a there's case trick there's wife around. trick she didn't know i was around the front one day and i heard her say he'll just sneak it in anyway <laughs> God <bless you. laughs> I've done everything you can do i've done it <laughs> i'm worse <laughs> uh, and I work in one too. Uh, my wife doesn't even notice. Like, oh, what's that? I was like, that's just a new. It's an old amp. You don't. Has this ever happened to you? I've never seen that guitar before. Oh, I've had this for six months or something. I just haven't played it. <laughs> and we, she doesn't talk to me anymore anyway, so we're fine. We're past that. She's like borderline leaving me. Oh. This is the most. This is like a bar. This is the best room yes, in the whole place so far. Yes, this is probably the what's best saying? vibe <laughs> of the you, entire man? store. I like this is where you get like a lot of great personalities just talking about music all the time, talking about gear all the time. Yes. Like this is probably the liveliest and one of my favorite rooms here. It's fine. I feel like I should have a drink already. <laughs> like, yeah, and like and Bryce back there reminds me of like young Tom Verlaine or Richard Lloyd a little bit. He loves Gibsons and he plays like wildfire. 
that dude is amazing. Is he into the band television at all? I don't know. Ask Bryce. Bryce, have you heard of the band television? Do you like... Hey, how are you? I'm Baxter. Uh, nice to meet you. I was like, have you heard of the band Television before? Yeah, I've heard the name. You just remind me of like those guys. Yeah. Like, you're like young Tom Verlaine. I was like, oh, yeah, I, okay. Tom Verlaine works here. <laughs> it's, it's a long story. I've been uh, Ashton Kutcher, yeah. Tommy Lee. Uh, <laughs> I, had, I had really long. I see it. I just, that's not fair. I get like Mr. Bean. It's like, oh, there's Mr. Bean or, or like, you know, Tim Burton. <laughs> I like to say, I say I'm like cross me and Brad Pitt and Mr. Bean. I don't know. I get Neil Gaiman vibes off of you. Ooh, that's good too. I um, I'll take that as long as it's, yeah, that's okay. I'll take that. Yeah. I'll take Tim Burton too, and I love Mr. Bean and Tim Burton because <laughs> Beetlejuice is my favorite movie, and Robert Smith's one of my favorite musicians. So. Robert, yeah, you definitely have like that Robert Smith I've like sort it. of like wild. I'm mixed vibe. with Willy Wonka because I'm obsessed yeah, with. Yeah. Before Willy's stuff. Robert kind of went the old Greg route, he just kind of. I, I see uh, pictures of you and I think of old Greg whenever they're like shooting that in the cave and everything. He's like, I'm old Greg! The good days. <laughs> okay, Gear Exchange wins the MVP for the most fun mm -hmm. room so far. Let's yes. go. Let's go somewhere depressing like pianos. <laughs> Sorry. This is our recording area. This is off the chain and I'm too old to say that or maybe I'm old enough to say that now. I, I think the uh, situation promotes it, yes. Holy cow. This is, I mean, the microphones and I just saw that thing back there. I don't even know what that little table is. We'll get to it. Don't worry. <laughs> but man, this is nuts. So this is what we have to get folks either started up on their recording journey or to improve upon it, give them more gear that is a little bit more bang for your buck. Um, on display are a bunch of microphones that we can literally just take off of the floor and have folks out. demo. Yeah, you can pretty much pull it off. Hook it up. Can I hold it? Yeah, Someone of course. Special. Like, I'm not gonna do anything weird. Like, no, it's hey, like hey, a, Martin. a wand. It is like it's like Harry Potter. <laughs> ah, kazoo. <laughs> I got really feminine when I did that. I still, I'd like the femme like wizard. <laughs> there was a, I can't wait to go to Harry Potter Land one day though. In Disney, I think that's where it is, right? I think Universal. Something like that. I don't Something, know. It's, I just want to go there at yeah. one point. But, um, this, I'm, this is probably a really expensive mic. How much does that cost? Yes, yeah, a thousand. Yeah, about a thousand. I'm gonna play with it. <laughs> We were trying to get the magic I out. I don't know that much about mics. I know the Neumanns and the Royers and all that stuff. I'm a that's, fan of the blues, like the baby bottle. Or they're the affordable or, and they yeah. sound good. We have a couple. You know, we, we use like the SM57 mm -hmm. and the Neumanns and the um, Royers for all of our demos, mm -hmm. you know, for the acoustic versus electric. Can you take me to that weird setup of those cool desks over there? Yeah. And the most important thing I see is the ring light for all you startup YouTube channels. That's all you need is a ring light, and you need to have it right in your face, because that's what they're there for. This is what I, this is like sort of every person's fantasy. Yes. Like have one of these chairs. I mean, it's a recorder. It's like it's a yeah. home recorder. You can literally have people uh, USB their stuff in here, so that way they can hear it in this room. You can alternate between different speakers. That was great. You just went mono for me. Yeah. Oh, snap, you're connected to those up there, yep. too. It gives you the whole you array of uh, our monitors on display, so that way you can hear the sound quality of each of them while you're trying these items out. I don't even record myself anymore, but like this still gets me excited. I don't know why I like this so much. All the and, like, buttons. I, did, I love, like, a, like this is all newfangled, but this is more like the old school stuff. I like the old lights, the old lunchbox things. I still know what they're called. Oh, help me. <laughs> Such a fun little, and this chair. I don't even know how much this chair costs, but I want one. Yeah, those are probably the best chairs. It's like a thousand dollar chair. Probably. So everything, everything in this room is a thousand dollars besides the ring light. So it's okay. <laughs> it's just it's your starting price. Damn you, Tamara, like a camera. All right, now we have the lighting and live sound room. This uh, room can get pretty bumping as well, considering all of the PAs that we have. So this is where we kind of advertise our mixing, our DJ equipment, our lighting, pretty much anything that will involve a stage presence that is for live music and shows. This is where we're coming to make sure that the customers are getting set up properly. And a speaker that changes its colors. The JBL Party Box. That's awesome. <laughs> No, this is really cool. This is, um, I mean, the fact that you have a, a faux stage set up to go is pretty, so you actually see it in action. People definitely use it. They really love being up there. I, I remember a folk singer utilized that stage just to kind of show off his skills to the rest of us. It's pretty awesome. No, it looks like you have like gear from the very affordable to the, the not so affordable. Mm-hmm. 
So this this is gonna be like you know proper church installs. To... Oh yeah, church schools. Um, I know that we do a lot of sound work for I believe like the Sweetwater baseball or not the Sweetwater, um, the Fort Wayne baseball stadium. <laughs> you guys have Everything a baseball stadium in too. Fort Wayne. Um, we do. We're just talking about your rugby team that fights Nestle's rugby team, or Bisquicks or Nesquicks, whatever it was. <laughs> I don't remember the other. The other, the other one that you guys battle. <laughs> and she's like, that's not true. It doesn't matter if it's not true. It's the internet. It's fine. <laughs> but all. yeah, we, we cater to a lot. We even have uh, teams that will go out to specific businesses to help get everything set up for them. So that way they always have a Sweetwater professional on hand to make sure that what they're plugging into isn't going to blow up on them for whatever reason to make sure that sound is coming out of everything. And you were saying, we were just talking earlier, I don't know if we had it on camera, but how many folks work the showroom on Saturday? Um, we're looking at like 18 to 25 folks. So this, it should be pretty easy to have someone help you. Oh yeah. Okay. That's not always the case. That's, that's pretty impressive. Oh yeah. All right, fine. So you are wins again. <laughs> So this next one is pretty much where I spend a good majority of my time. Oh. It is the Band and Orchestra. Con Selmer, right down the road from us in Elkhart. And they do a lot of, uh, they bring in a lot of their instruments here so that we can sell them. You can automatically see like a lot of the Bach brand, brands on there, Selmer brands. Um, so it's really convenient having like a legit music I factory. Mean, you right have down. marimbas. Mm -hmm. That's weird enough. Like yes. real, real life marimbas. Do you want some mallets and try it out? I mean, yeah, I'll do that later. Okay. We'll, I'll be definitely doing that because that's insane how big that one is. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of marimbas. I've not seen one like that with tubes and pipes and. No, this is um, impressive. How old is the B&O? Um, it went into full swing June of 2021. It's That's when new. we were just moving everything in. Um, at first, it was just kind of like a small corner of violins and cellos, um, the same display as far as like the brass and the woodwinds instruments. But over the past two years, since we've been refining kind of like how we're selling the instruments in here, especially with rental seasons, we're we're kind of bulking up to show that we really do have quality items for this niche of music. No, it's music. solid. And just, just you know, even though Dave's going to have to move here in a minute, Derek, just to give people um, an idea that like, guitars aren't always that expensive, just a bass, $6,000, mm -hmm. $4,500. You know, the marimba or the right behind you is $8,000. So your guitar that costs $5,000 is pretty much a steal at the end of the day. So don't even fret about that. I mean, you explain that to your partner, your <laughs> wife, your husband, at least I'm not buying my kids $6,000 basses right now. So I'm buying a $5,000 guitar for myself to play in my living room that you no one's up in here. You could be having an $8,000 marimba in our kitchen. I mean, I would love that in the kitchen. My kitchen's <laughs> not big enough for that, but um, it's literally not big enough for that, but it's, that's really cool. That's just one of the biggest, like, the suit makers is that right down the street too. It's like uh, Fox. Fox. Like, Fox. 30, 40 so mm -hmm. hold your horse is the biggest bassoon maker. I love that. Bassoon's mm -hmm. a weird instrument too, but kind of, it's super expensive. Yes. One of my friends, Lindsay, I'm gonna call you out there. Her, her, the mouthpiece for a flute is eight thousand dollars alone. Was it gold plated or? Uh, was she's it... fancy. She's a professional flautist, ah, which is a funny word to me. <laughs> Lindsay Leach Sparks, whatever her fancy name is. That's a great name, right? It, it sounds like a great stage but, um, name. I shouldn't have just told how much her mouthpiece costs. This was years ago too. It's probably more expensive now. I don't know. <laughs> Um, but that's, thank you for showing us the band and orchestra of rooms. Yeah. It's, this is, it's bigger than most band and orchestra shops. A lot of the times, like whenever band and orchestra, yep. Dude, sorry. I just saw that one. I just got it. We need to have this and I would, this is about the size of like a bedroom. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, it feels dead too. It's like a dead zone. It's very like, as soon as the door closes, like you can finally sort of hear yourself. You got like that elimination of background. This, it's almost like the, the quiet rooms where you go crazy. Mm -hmm. So if you're at home and you want to, you have an extra bedroom and you want to spend a little bit extra money, just talk to Tamara <laughs> and she's going to figure out how to outfit your room to have this button in it. Testing. Hello. That's nuts. <laughs> I can't play trumpet, so I'm like, hello. <laughs> Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> <laughs> I can do him too. I mean, y'all all like Shazam. <laughs> oh, this, that's cool. Let's go small now. Hold up. Testing. Testing. There it is. So there's reverb. I don't know if you can capture it on camera. It's really weird. 
When I do small, it's going to medium. Testing one, two. I don't understand how it does that. There's microphones that so, on the wall. So right behind here is where that uh, microphone is. That sounds like Yar's Revenge. You're too young <laughs> to know that. But um, so there's a microphone here in the wall, apparently. They took the magic out. I didn't really want to know. Oh, sorry. That's okay. I'm glad you told me. <laughs> it's so I, so I talk. Hello. What's oh, even better? So that's where so you play into that. Into, into the wall. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> yeah, I would just do this all day. This is so much fun. This is the dumbest room I've ever been in. I have to have one in my house now. So Taylor, and my wife, we're going to Zach's bedroom is now going to become this room or one of the kids rooms. It doesn't matter. Whatever. We have three of them. We're in the keyboards, even though there's real, real keyboards behind all this camera, like real pianos, mm -hmm. which I, I'm going to tell you, so I had a problem at one point. I had five pianos, like real like grand pianos or just like upright. I will two are upright okay and three grand pianos okay. i have an issue with getting rid of pianos <laughs> i just think they're really pretty and special but continue tell me about this place so this is as you notice our keyboard room but it's not just specific digital keyboards as you said we do have acoustic pianos we have synths we have modulators we have sound devices that you're able to sample those are made in our state in the moog yes I love their office hours because they're always consistently coming out with new stuff. So the vendors that work with us, sometimes they set up shop in one of our conference rooms and does what's called office hours, oh, where you fun. can learn from these items from the actual vendors that are selling them. I thought you meant when you said they're office hours, like they just don't work hard. Oh no. Because they, they, yeah. they, they just hang out in Asheville, North Carolina, smoking a bit. Because <laughs> they are, they are kind of hippies. Really. Yeah, the commute is probably really long yeah, for they're, them. They're chilling. <laughs> That's cool. So yeah, this is um pretty impressive. You have pretty much every keyboard brand mm -hmm. in the digital keyboard world I can see right Yamaha, now. Yamaha, Roland, Moog. We have Nord, Akai. Yeah. Obviously the Red Beasts. Mm -hmm. I'm a Nord player myself. I always just try to make like spacey sounds from a lot of these and and all these little cool consoles as well. It's, uh -huh. it's pretty darn impressive here. So you got pretty much everything from the beginner Casio to the stage touring professional keyboard mm -hmm. that you offer okay just like standard 76 keys if people are trying to learn at home all the way up to like full-fledged instruments it's it's awesome we also uh sell method books for those who are doing their own self-teaching journeys like real physical books mm -hmm. And we have the Sweetwater Academy as well, so we're able to transfer customers to that area so that way they can have weekly lessons and kind of hone their, their interests. Awesome. Okay. And that is Sweetwater Music Story. Man, that's, that's pretty. Th dude, thank you, man. Yeah, of course. I this really This was like super it. fun. Thank yeah. you very much. I appreciate that.